Hi, this is Mr. Esterbrooks again. Uh, in a previous video, we did a three-view orthographic projection drawing of uh, this pink puzzle cube part. So uh, today, in this video, I'm going to show you how we're going to dimension that part. Dimensioning is an important part of, uh, of uh, IED and technical drawing. So we're going to uh, put in some dimensions. And uh, here's the, the multi-view drawing we started with. What I always recommend students do is start with counting up each of the width, depth, and height dimensions. So remember, the height is from the bottom to the top, so your height dimensions can go in either of the front or right side views. The width dimensions are shown on the front and top side views, so your width dimensions can go in either of those views. And then the depth dimensions are usually the hardest. The depth dimensions can go on either the top view going this way or the right side view going this way. And again, once we get to Autodesk Inventor, your isometric view is going to go in this uh, top uh, right side quadrant of the paper. So starting from one edge or the other, the left or right edge, move across and count how many edges you cross starting from the left edge. So remember, this left edge is like the zero line. If we move across, that's one, two, three edges. So we're going to need three width dimensions. Then from the bottom, we go one, two, from the bottom to the top, you'll notice we cross two edges. So we're going to need two height dimensions. Then from the depth, we can go from front to back on either the top or right side views and count how many edges we cross. So from the front, one, two edges. So that means we're going to need a total of three plus two plus two is seven total dimensions. So that's kind of total. Uh, total dimensions. That's kind of the easy part. Counting up how many dimensions we need is the easy part. Now, the reason we spent so much time picking the best front view was because we want all of our dimensions, or as many of our dimensions as possible, to be on that view. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clean up some of my construction lines so that it makes the dimensions stand out better. And um, starting from the left side, we counted three dimensions, so I need one dimension to each of those edges. So I draw my extension line going up and away from the object. I'm going to need a dimension going to this edge, which will be closest to the part, to this edge, which will be a little further away, and then, of course, the overall width. Now, we've already looked uh, at our list. You've seen the list of dimensioning guidelines, and so we know that this dimension is 0.75. It's going to go from here to there. Put your little arrowheads in there. This dimension is two of those, so it's 1.5. And then the overall width is three cubes, which is 2.25. Now notice we don't put the units in there because the units will go down at the bottom of the page in the title block. So your title block will go down here. A lot of this will be automated when we do this in Autodesk Inventor. So there we go, one, two, three width dimensions, we're done with those. The depth dimensions, uh, in this part, we really have an option to put it on the top view or on the right side view. It doesn't really matter which. So I'm going to start with my extension lines. Put my first dimension here. Notice we don't turn the text sideways. That's a standard called unidirectional dimensioning. We just write the text vertically, uh, uh, horizontally, even for the vertical dimensions. And there's one, two edges, one, two edges. So there's our depth dimensions. I'm just going to darken that edge in a little bit better. And again, it's nice at this point to clean up some of your construction lines so your uh, dimension and extension lines really stand out a little bit better. So the last thing we need are the height dimensions. Those I'm going to put on the front view one from the bottom of the part to this edge. And again, extending that common baseline, we just need the overall height. So again, if you go and review your dimensioning guidelines, you will see that uh, we are required to have the overall depth, overall width, and overall height. I've got those. And then we're required to have one dimension, exactly one dimension, to each edge in the part beyond those overall dimensions. We want to make sure we don't duplicate any dimensions. And there's a whole list of those 20 or some dimensioning guidelines, which should, you should refer to as you're doing your dimensioning. 
So uh, dimensioning is really complicated, and, and it uh, takes a long time to get the hang of it. Uh, hopefully this will get you started. Thanks for watching.